and you ask. Okay. Yes, I, I get your file. Thanks. Uh, I, you asked me to send the PDF file beforehand, and yes. I tried to send it by email and also try to share it by Dropbox. Is that okay? Okay. So you can test, you can go ahead and share the screen. Yes. yes. Just interrupt sharing. Yes, yes right. right. Yes. Okay. Yes, great. So we can just wait a few more minutes. Thank yes. You. Yes.
I think we can gradually start and let me press the recording. So, welcome, welcome everyone to Harvard CMSA Quantum Matter in Math and Physics Seminar Series. You call me Nasan. Uh, uh, we are very delighted to invite Professor Yoshio Kikukawa from Institute of Physics, University of Tokyo. Uh, he'll be speaking about some of his uh, works uh, related to uh, this uh, latest regularization of a chiral fermion chiral gauge theory. And the title is Why is the Mission Impossible? I think it's called Nimusuku Fukano, decoupling the mirror Ginsburg Wilson fermions in the latest models for two dimensional abelian chiral gauge theory. Let me remind the audience. Please feel free to interact and or ask questions during the seminar when you find the time is appropriate. And uh, and that, that is all. So let us directly welcome Yoshio. Please take over, Professor. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, introduction, uh, Juven. And uh, it is my great pleasure to give a seminar here, a CMSA seminar series. And uh, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for giving me these opportunities. And today, uh, I'd like to discuss about, uh, especially two-dimensional U1 chiral gauge theories and how to put on the lattice with exact gauge invariance. And uh, here, uh, I would like to concentrate on the so-called mirror fermion approach using the overlap fermion. And here, uh, usually people often consider the simplest model, so-called three, four, five model. But here I want to consider the other model, uh, so-called this one and this one, charge assignment, this kind of this uh, assignment. And uh, I would like to explain why I a consider this type of model instead of three, four, five model and how to construct it. And actually this model is closely related to the so-called Majorana chain and with nu equal eight, with SO7 usually, symmetric for fermion interactions. And I'd like to explain this point too. And uh, since in the weak gauge coupling limit, where the gauge coupling constant is zero in, the lim in that limit. The model is still interacting model, but the, I found that I we explained that the model is uh, without sign problem. So we can do the Monte Carlo simulation. And uh, I'd like to sh uh, pro and show some numerical result. And I'd like to uh, claim that decoupling of the mirror fermion uh, is working in this model. So this is my claim in this work. Okay. And uh, why uh, I, uh, Abelian chiral gauge theory in two dimensions is, is regarded, uh, we think that model is a good toy model to test various proposals and approaches for non-perturbative construction of chiral gauge theories. The target theory is uh, uh, usually defined on the four-dimensional theories. Uh, the target theory is a four-dimensional theory usually, but this is a two-dimensional model. But uh, this is nothing but the chiral Chibinga model with anomaly-free fermion content. And uh, the charge assignment of the left-handed wire fermions and the right-handed fermions are asymmetric. This is, uh, that is why we call this model chiral Schrodinger model. And it, but charge assignment must satisfy the anomaly-free condition given by this condition. So example is three, four, five model and one, 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 two model, okay. And that this model is super normalizable and actually it is solvable, okay? And the gauge field acquired mass 
due to chiral anomaly. So we, if we can measure the mass of the gauge bosons, we can measure the uh, how many wild fermions contribute to the low energy effective theory. Okay. And the impact, we can derive the uh, effective action for the gauge field after the pass integration of the uh, fermion, chiral fermions. We obtain, we, we can obtain this kind of effective actions. Okay. And uh, that this C, the term here, this term is a regularization dependent term. And if C is unity, effective action is gauge invariant. And because of this structure of the one loop collection due to the wild fermions, this, this is a non-local contribution to the two-point functions, and it gives rise to the mass gauge invariant manner. It gives rise to the mass for mass to the abelian gauge field. Okay. So in this way, uh, this is a solvable, super normalizable series. But even in two dimensions, we do not have gauge invariant regularization, perturbative, I mean perturbative and the continuous theory. So if one try to formulate a chiral gauge theory on the lattice with exact gauge barriers, this is a very nice toy model to check the, the certain method actually work or not. So this is why we are considering this kind of simple model. And uh, recent activities about the two-dimensional U1 chiral gauge theory on the lattice with exact gauge invariants uh, involves uh, this work, these works by Juben in, in, uh, and his collaborators. And they, they considered, they are considering the edge mode in needy topological insulator superconductor. And they, they considered a so, uh, 345 model. And uh, they uh, to examine what kind of interaction uh, should gap the mirror fermion mode. They consider the low energy effective continuum theory, uh, three dimensional Chan Simon theory, and two dimensional chiral boson is sine Gordon coupling. And they uh, derived or well, they determined what kind of interaction should be included or not. And moreover, they uh, tried to, uh, they simulated the model using the density matrix renormalization group method recently, and they, pro, uh, they published several papers. They uh, uh, put some paper on the archive recently, quite recently, this one. And this uh, work, since this work based on the Topological insulator or superconductor. Uh, this lattice model is formulated in the Hamiltonian formulation. Okay. So, this is the very recent activities on this kind of work. On the other hand, uh, there are several works uh, in, in the formulation in the two dimensional lattice path integral formulations. And the very old but very nice work is done by Martin Lucia. And actually, he, he, give up, he gave a rigorous proof that four dimensional Abelian chiral gauge theory with anomaly free content can be put on the lattice with exact gauge invariance and other uh, basic requirements such as locality, lattice symmetry, and so on. So, for as for the Abelian chiral gauge theories, the question how to formulate non perturbatively the chiral gauge theory non perturbatively is actually solved. Okay, but the construction itself is not so easy. So we, with Kadokum, and I tried to simplify his formulation and try to implement numerically how to compute the gauge field dependence of the path integral measure and so on. And that means that how to compute the 
uh, local counter terms to preserve exact age invariance on the lattice and so on. And in two dimensions, at least, uh, we can work out the such gauge invariant measures. So although it is rather complicated, but actually <laughs> we can implement numerically. Okay, so I, I would like to say that as far as Abelian chiral gauge series, okay, with the anomaly free content, the problem how to put such models on the lattice, such series on the lattice is actually solved. Okay. And uh, this formulation applies to dimensional case too. So we actually have a gauge invariant formulation of chiral Schubinger model on the lattice. And uh, this provides actually the gauge invariant effective action for the gauge field. Okay. So this is one point I would like to uh, say. And on the other hand, there is another approach, so-called uh, mirror Fermi approach. And uh, this approach is based on the uh, overlap fermions, same as the Lusha's work, but we start from the overlap Dirac fermions and try to decouple the mirror fermion modes, extra mirror modes, by some interactions. And, uh, uh, Popit and his collaborators started, have uh, proposed this formulation and try to uh, figure out it works, it could work or not. And in particular, he studied two dimensional Abelian chiral gauge theory and the 342 model. Indeed. And they did some numerical computations with a certain, uh, for uh, with certain, he formulated three, four, five model in a certain manner and did numerical studies. But their result is they pro they their numerical their numerical result showed that the decoupling of mirror fermion that won't the mirror fermion won't decouple from the spectrum. And it actually produces some low energy contribution to the uh, gauge boson mass, non local contribution to the two point vertex function of the gauge field. It could produce the extra contribution to the mass square of the gauge boson. So, but uh, since, as I said, actually we already have a gauge invariant formulation by Martin Lusher. And the same fermion are used in the Poppy's work. So it is very puzzling situation. So I, by myself, try to understand what is going on in his approaches. And uh, we did some study, but I, actually we found several points some singular property of their models. And so we tried to fix that problem. And uh, we consider rather simpler models, Abelian chiral gauge models, Ab Abelian chiral gauge theories, which can be constructed in a simpler manner and try to demonstrate that uh, decoupling of mirror fermion actually works in such formulations. And so I would like to discuss such attempts, such uh, works, such uh, works in this talk. In this respect, I would like to quote uh, from uh, the John Preskill's write up for the talks, plenary talks uh, in Lattice Conference 2018. He gave a talk about simulating quantum field theory with a quantum computer. And in this write-up, he mentioned about some problem as about the non-perturbative formulation 
of chiral gauge theories. And the, he say, uh, for example, chiral fermion pose another important challenge. The standard model is chiral, you know, and if we try to introduce left-handed fermion with a specified charge, we also get unwanted right-handed particles with the same charge in lattice formulations. We've been facing this problem for over 40 years, but there is still no accepted method for regularizing a chiral theory. That's embarrassing. And he continued, this long-standing problem may be nearing a resolution, guided in part by recent insights regarding symmetry protected topological phases of matter. Two old ideas are the first one, uh, one, cut one, uh, one, two, the first one, to realize a d dimensional chiral theory on the lattice, we can introduce an extra spatial direction so that left handed and right handed fermion live on two different d dimensional edge of a d plus one dimensional path. And here uh, he quoted 45, the paper 45. And this is nothing but the a Kaplan's lattice domain wall fermion paper. Okay. And uh, in the second part, he said to realize a two dimensional chiral gaze on the lattice, we can introduce strong interaction for the express purpose of removing unwanted right handed fermions by giving them large masses while preserving the massless left handed fermions. And uh, this is nothing but the uh, idea in the Einstein Preskill model. And uh, this he called his own paper with uh, Einstein. Okay. And then he said, it seems likely that one and the two together work more effectively than either one or two by itself. And here he quotes uh, the paper by uh, Professor Ben. Uh, about the standard model and the SO10 chiral gauge theory using the uh, topological insulator or superconductor. Okay. That's because separating the two edges with a higher dimensional bulk makes it easier to apply the strong interaction to one chirality without affecting the other. Okay. So he is saying this one. And so, and so, so this is uh, this is the the comment John Preskill gave uh, in his write up of the lattice conference. And let me add some to this comment. And in view of the fact that is, in view of the fact that overlap by fermion is nothing but the low energy effective local and lattice theory for the edge chiral model domain wall fermion infinitely separated. The mirror fermion model with overlap fermion and the item preskill interaction term are the simplest possible effective framework to construct or demonstrate, construct chiral gauge theory on the lattice or to demonstrate that formulation works indeed. So uh, in this talk, concentrating to the two-dimensional Abelian chiral gauge theory on the lattice. Uh, I would like to discuss the mirror fermion approach with the overlap fermions. Uh, actually, works or not. And for this purpose, as I said, we consider more simpler, I think, uh, Abelian chiral gauge theories uh, to construct uh, rather than three, four, five models. And uh, I explain why and how to construct, why I construct, consider this kind of model and how to construct uh, uh, this, how to construct this model explicitly on the lattice. And in the course of this explanation, I'd like to point out several properties of my lattice model uh, in, and the difference uh, from 
the puppets uh, actually uh, formulated three, four, five model. Okay. And the main point is that uh, this model is based on the uh, new equal eight Majorana chain with the SO6 symmetric for fermion interaction. And uh, in the solid state, Shaev uh, Pidukowski and Yao and his collaborator um, proved that this chain with SO6 case, even, uh, even with SO6 symmetric for interaction, for fermion interaction, this model can be gapped completely, even in the uh, muscles limit. Oh, muscles limit. Okay. Um, uh, bilinear mass time vanishes, even when the bilinear mass time vanishes, for fermion interaction can gap out all of the fermion. Okay. So uh, I would like to discuss this point more later okay and then uh, i would like to uh, show some numerical results by monte carlo simulation in the weak gauge coupling limit okay so today i would like to concentrate on the two-dimensional case like this excuse me some questions yes. yes please uh, so yeah first of all let me just make sure the one of the model this uh, possibly you write is one to the power four and minus one to the power four. Is that yes. four left moving most valve fermion and four, four right moving valve fermions with charge one and minus one for yes. one for left and minus one for right? Uh, yes. So one oh. for right handed valve fermions and minus one for left handed fermions, I mean. Right. Uh, in some yes. sense, I wonder whether this model you can just redefine the field such that the yeah the actually vector like theory instead of a yeah 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 but uh, uh, yes yes so so yeah it it is yes so this is yes we can rewrite the field yeah by the charge conjugation okay and the vector like series but yes. if we but if you keep but uh, uh, I, yeah, but because of the if since we have a four fermions, we can have another symmetry, and by sim by uh, that is actually the spin six. Uh, the we have left handed uh, four left handed wire fermions here and uh, right handed fermions and four minus one charge for while uh, light handed while fermions. And then we can um, think these four fermions belongs to the four dimensional representation of spin six. And you want actual symmetry. Okay, the gauge interaction is actually you want actual symmetry. And by these symmetries, we can, um, uh, by imposing these symmetries, we can forbid the bilinear uh, mass terms for these fermions with extra uh, symmetries. So it is not exactly vector like series because of the symmetry structure. So, so that means that possibly you want to impose additional symmetry, not just this one, right? Yeah, you are actual and spin six. Uh, symmetry uh, or SO6 symmetry. Okay, so so, yeah. so, so yes. run require additional symmetry. Otherwise, you can aid some term like a, a superconductor. This uh, yes, by linear term that you can still preserve that symmetry to gap it. Uh, so you probably want to aid uh, impose additional symmetry. Yes, this model. Yeah. Uh, another question is: What is exactly is the Ashton Prescale interaction that you? You mean there? Ah, yes. Here is uh, some for Fermi or higher multi fermion interactions, which breaks all possible continuous uh, fermion symmetry, uh, which could have a, a which have a Tofuta anomaly. I mean. Okay. So we need to keep. In order to decouple the uh, 
mirror fermions, we need to kill all possible Toffut anomalies. And uh, so we need to introduce extra interactions to kill such in, uh, symmetries. And I refer, I call these kind of interaction as item pesky interaction. Is that clear? So if 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 we have a global continuous symmetry, global symmetry, X, uh, aside of the gauge symmetries, if it has a Toffut anomaly, we cannot, uh, it is not, we, we, cannot, we cannot expect to decouple the uh, mirror fermions. Because if you have a Toffut anomaly for the continuous global symmetries, the gauge invariant uh, conserved the current for that symmetry should have correlation functions gauge invariant uh, conserved current should have some infrared singularity. And there must be a massless degrees of freedom to saturate such singularities. And this uh, contradicts the fact that uh, all possible spec, all, all possible, all field uh, acquire mass in, in a certain way. And there is no low energy light degrees of freedom. So uh, here I call uh, this such kind of interaction to kill all possible continuous global symmetry, which has a total anomaly. Is that clear? But, but also Tofu anomaly mixed with the symmetry that you want to preserve, or is that right? You want to preserve, what do you mean? Uh, suppose you have a symmetry you want to preserve, like the chiral, chiral symmetry you want to preserve. There could be other symmetry has mixed anomaly with this chiral symmetry. And uh, yes. the mixed anomaly between the chiral symmetry and additional other symmetry. So yes. do you call the this Ashton Price scale interaction by those interaction kill the yeah. term mixed anomaly? Yes. OK. The global symmetry pitch has a mixed global anomaly, a mixed uh, Toffut anomaly, too. Yeah. And uh, yes, I, I can basically propose that we must add every interaction. Uh, we must kill all of them, Continu but continuous global symmetry, yes. But, but my, my impression, or maybe the past, I feel like Ashton Preskill may not give enough condition on what interaction should be aided. So maybe uh, I, I didn't get that point, but uh, but uh, I guess uh -huh. I, uh -huh. I guess that's the interpretation. Yeah, you know, I, I saw the Ashton Preskill maybe aiding interaction by, uh, Maybe just by preserving the chiral symmetry that you want to preserve, and maybe there are some other conditions, but it wasn't so clear to me at that moment when I was uh, trying to understand the point. But uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe you can point out more about this this interaction later. Which basically, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, yes, yeah. So uh, okay, any other questions? If not, uh, let me first uh, briefly uh, review the basics of lattice premiums uh, in order to fix my notation, okay? And then I want to go to the uh, mirror fermion approach for the, with overlap premiums for two-dimensional chiral series. I actually pre uh, prepared the uh, short review of the basics of the Einstein Pesky model itself. Because the mirror Ginzburg Wilson mirror fermion approach is nothing but a variant of the Einstein Pesky model. So, but uh, uh, Jiben, I'm sorry, but I would like to skip that part for the first for, for the first time because of the uh, time. If we, we have enough time later, then I can go back to this one. Yes. Okay. So let me skip. Uh, let me uh, briefly review. Uh, the lattice gauge theory and the lattice fermion basics. Okay, and the uh, uh, lattice gauge theory defined on the uh, square uh, uh, regular square lattice, uh, regular lattice, 
And the field usually put on the lattice and gauge field is put on the link, minimal link, as a, a, a which takes a value in the gauge group itself here. And the new hat, new hat, uh, hat denotes here uh, the unit vector in that direction mu. And the A is for, A stands for the lattice spacing. And the gauge transformation is uh, defined like this on site symmetry. And the link field transformed by the gauge transformation by two elements, two sites, like this. Okay. And the covariant derivative, covariant difference operator can be defined with is by inserting the link field like this. And the uh, commutator of the covariant difference operator gives rise to the uh, this factor. And the, this u square is the, the product of four link variable around the minimal uh, area. Okay, And the, this is called bracket variable. And from this, this part, this is nothing but the curvature of the gauge field. And the, this from this part, we can define the gauge invariant uh, measure. And the path integral is performed on the, with the gauge invariant uh, group invariant measure. So uh, by with this action, with this measure, we can define the manifestly gauge invariant manner. Uh, we can define the partition function and the correlation function manifestly gauge invariant manner. And, but the lattice fermion, fermion field on the lattice suffer from the species doubling problem. And the Wilson term, usually we use the Wilson term to resolve the degeneracy of doublers. But um, it, that this procedure breaks chiral symmetry. And the Wilson term is defined by this uh, second derivative term, like this. And here, mu, uh, we uh, assume the Einstein sum convention. Okay, so um, we we omit the uh, symbol for the sum over the mu index. Okay, and here too, and here. Okay, so this is nothing but the lattice uh, Laplacian, and it gives rise to the mass for the uh, uh, for the higher mo momentum mode. So in this manner, and uh, this is. This is different for the different for momentum mode. So species double uh, degenerate, uh, degenerate uh, species double are uh, split, split, split it in this way. So in this way, uh, uh, we can remove uh, the species double by giving a mass of order inverse cutoff. But since this is nothing but the mass term, it must break the chiral symmetry. But uh, this procedure is not so uh, bad because this explicit chiral symmetry breaking, if we consider this term in the gauge invariant uh, gauge series, this term can reproduce the chiral anomaly by this explicit through this explicit breaking term. Okay. And that this chiral symmetry breaking. Uh, a phenomena is actually very generic and the inevitable result as claimed by the Nielsen Ninomia theorem. Okay, and so if we have a reasonable lattice Dirac operator for or to have a without species doublet, it must break, uh, it must, we, we cannot uh, formulate such lattice Dirac operator with the Good chiral property given by this relation. I did Childa anti commute with gamma phi. Okay. This is the uh, usual uh, condition for the lattice of uh, fermion action is chiral invariant. Okay. The other condition is without uh, other condition, other three conditions here are a locality and no species doublet and so on. So if we try to formulate a reasonable lattice Dirac operator, then uh, we must have chiral symmetry breaking. Yes. And, and, and the ginzburg wilson relation, so-called the ginzburg wilson relation defined the chiral limit of lattice premier actions. 
and it says that uh, uh, chiral symmetry breaking must exist. Uh, chiral symmetry in the chiral limit of lattice fermions. A chiral symmetry, explicit chiral symmetry breaking remains, but only in the local contact terms in the propagators. The, this result is first obtained by the block spin transformation technique at the infrared fixed point. And the later, this, if we, we can formulate this lattice Dirac operator fits satisfy this uh, relation, we can define the local chiral, uh, local, I mean the uh, chiral transformation and the uh, action uh, is uh, action is chiral symmetric exactly by this kind of chiral transformation. So at the infrared fixed point, exact chiral symmetry emerges in defined if we can formulate lattice Dirac operator which satisfy this deviation. Okay. So in this way, uh, we can uh, specify when and lattice Dirac operator uh, satisfies the uh, chiral symmetry on the lattice. Even Nielsen Ninomia theorem tells us that the chiral symmetry in this sense must be broken, but we can establish the chiral limit by imposing this condition. Okay, And there we can define the chiral transformation consistent manner. As long as D is local, this transformation is local. So chiral symmetry is defined, very defined, uh, can be defined. Okay, So this is the ginzburg wilson relation. And the so-called overall Dirac operator is a local gauge covariant solution to this ginzburg wilson relation. And uh, this is explicitly given by this formula here, X is a wilson Dirac operator with a negative mass relative to the Wilson term. Okay. okay, in this region of the Dirac, uh, if we have a negative mass relative to the Wilson Dirac operator, we cannot say that uh, this operator uh, uh, has a mass gap. If we have a plus signature here, we can prove rigorously that X has a gap. But for the negative region, we do not have such a we cannot prove such uh, results. So this is uh, so the, this bare mass uh, relative to the the signature of this bare mass relative to the Wilson term is actually uh, very important. Yes. So for Wilson fermions, we do not have a symmetry uh, with respect to the signature of the bare mass parameter. Okay, and that. Overlap Dirac operator uses this fact. And this is the formula for this one. And that this Dirac operator uh, defined, uh, the lattice fermion defined with this Dirac operator is nothing but is obtained from as a low energy effective lattice action for four plus one dimensional domain wall fermions. Okay. And uh, for the gauge theories, since D is constructed gauge covariantly, we can formulate a gauge lattice Dirac fermion coupled to the uh, gauge link variables. And then we can show that index theorem holds true on the lattice because of the chiral transformation produces non trivial uh, Jacobian in the chiral transformation. And it, that precisely. Um, reproduce the index theorem on the lattice. And also in the free fermion case, reflection positivity is also proved. Okay. But uh, uh, if we, we introduce the gauge interactions, uh, the station is not uh, clear yet, but at least in the free case, this Dirac operator defined lattice fermion with this Dirac operator is reflection positive, satisfy reflection positive. Okay. So this is the overlap Dirac. And once we obtain this overlap Dirac operator, we can also be, we can also introduce 
wide degrees of freedom of lattice fermions. And uh, in the chiral transformation, we have we use this factor for the field, and uh, this usual gamma phi for the anti field. And based on this fact, uh, we can define the another chiral operator in this expression, and another chiral projector with this gamma phi hat. Okay, then the field is can be decomposed to the wire component by the eigenstate of gamma five operator, and the anti-field is defined usually. Then uh, we can show that this Dirac fermion action factorized to the left and right-handed part exactly in this manner. So we can try to use half of this part to describe uh, wild fermion lattice coupled to the gauge field, gauge link variables. Okay, so. So this action itself is, is manifestly gauge invariant. Okay. Okay. So, so this is a way to define the chiral components or a wire component of the Dirac fermion. Uh, if we have a, a lattice Dirac of lattice, when we use the overlap fermion. Okay. Excuse me, question. Yes. I, yes. I think uh, possibly also for the audience, let me just yep. make sure I understand correctly. When you, when you earlier say the exact chiral symmetry emerge, do you just mean that they emerge only at the limit when the is constant A goes to zero? No, I no. In the no. in the limit of the infrared fixed point. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So A A yes. can be finite. Yes, A can be finite. Okay. Yes. Thank okay. you very much. An another okay. question is that. Uh, uh, when you say the overlap the operator is local, but uh, does that have an exponential tail at a large distance? Yes, but okay. the decay, the uh, the rate of the decay is over the lattice spacing. Okay, so yes, so the exponential decay is within several. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, it has an exponential tail, but uh, uh, the decay rate is uh, of order lattice spacing, several lattice spacing. And then we can say that such lattice operator is local. Yes, but, but you agree. Not, that... not ultra local, I mean. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, but you agree that for people who care about maybe local tensor product Hilbert space type of structure, this Dirac operator written in this way with yes. this exponential decay tail is not really on-site. It's not the on-site Hilbert space yeah. structure, yes. so, which is yes. not a problem, but I'm just saying this are a property which we call non on site symmetry. Yeah. Non -onsite. Yes. So the chiral, yeah. symmetry, chiral symmetry in this way is non on site. I suppose you will agree with this. Yes, I agree with you. Okay. Yes. Even though it can yes. be local at a infrared yes. limit. No, yes. Okay. Yes. yes. And uh, this is why this chiral symmetry can produce the chiral anomaly, right? Yes. Okay, yes so, yeah. So in this way, the non-on-site symmetry. This is how to. Uh, this is the way how to reproduce chiral anomaly. So yes. Can, can, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, we all agree on the same language or same same setting. Yes. Thank yeah. You. Thank you very much. Yes. 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 Yeah, actually, that point is very interesting. And uh, usually, if you have a Tofus anomaly, that symmetry should be, cannot be uh, realized as on site symmetries. And then uh, I expect that there is some way to formulate that symmetry in this manner. Okay. So, Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So sure. this is uh, yeah. So I, I think that that point is very interesting point in related to the uh, Tofut anomaly. Uh, so hi. thank you very much. Yes. So uh, and uh, finally, uh, Professor uh, Kikawa, uh, just just yes. Uh, yes. Uh, add on maybe a naive question. So if the chiral symmetry is not strictly local, right? Then uh, 
how how do I actually gauge it? Is it would, would that be difficult or? No, no. Yeah, th that is another very important point. Yes, and um, yes, since this Dirac operator is uh, a functional function of the usual uh, Wilson Dirac operator, this Wilson Dirac operator is defined as a difference operator like this. And uh, D is obtained, can be obtained from this expression of Wilson Dirac operator. So if we have a, a gauge covariant Wilson Dirac operator, then D is also gauge covariant, which means that uh, here a uh, difference operator is covariantized with link variables. Then this Dirac operator also covariant. So in this manner, since we have a very explicit expression of D in terms of the Wilson Dirac operator, usual one, so we can gauge covariant type this operator. So this is a very uh, 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 important point of the overlap Dirac operator compared to the uh, uh, lattice Dirac operator obtained by the explicit block spin transformations a la Ginsberg Wilson. And uh, we do not, we didn't have, we do not have a, a gauge invariant version of the uh, if uh, infrared fixed point Dirac operator. As you know, if you include the link variable explicitly, it is very hard to do the block spin transformation, right? So, uh, uh, but if we, if we consider this overlap Dirac operator, this Dirac operator is gauge covariant and satisfies the ginzburg wilson relations. So this is a nice property of the overlap Dirac operator. I see. And, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is a. Uh, uh, so we uh, use this. Uh, we assume this overlap Dirac operator, and uh, we uh, consider the chiral decomposition by this manner. And uh, if we consider, if you try to formulate a chiral gauge theory, you can only consider you can consider only the half part of this part but in this case we need to define the pass integral measure for that wire fermion okay and uh, that this wire component is defined with the gamma 5 hat which depends on the Dirac operator so this condition depends on the gauge field through the link Dirac operator D as, as then uh, it is a non-trivial uh, problem to define the functional measure, pass integral measure for uh, wire fermions. For Dirac fermions, we can use the simple uh, measure, which does not depend on the KG field. But if we try to uh, project out the left-handed components or right-handed components with this condition, then the, me uh, the construction measure is non-trivial because it depend it can depend on the gauge field. So this is the reason why the if you consider the wire fermion in this manner, it can reproduce the gauge anomaly actually. But in order to try the gauge invariant uh, theory with anomaly-free conditions, you must be pro recover the gauge invariance at finite lattice spacing. Okay, so this is very hard problem. So, okay. And uh, uh, the mirror fermion approach I'm going to discuss is to use the Dirac fermion, but give uh, a certain interactions for the right handed mode to decouple physically by giving a certain mass like time to the system, uh, the, the right handed to give a gap to the right-handed sector by some interactions. And for if we, but if we uh, start from the lattice uh, Dirac fermions, we can use simple gauge independent functional measure for the Dirac fermions. So that is a uh, uh, nice point for the mirror fermion approach. If we can successfully decouple the fermion by 
certain interactions or not. So this is a very different approach. So as okay, the, I, I mentioned that the, even for the Arbelian chiral gauge series, there are two approaches. So Martin Lusha uh, approach, Martin Lusha's approach is is nothing but to use half part of the lattice action. This left-handed part only. Okay. Then he tried to construct a functional measure, which uh, also satisfies the which is gauge invariant and satisfies the locality condition and so on. Okay. So uh, you can expect uh, uh, that formulation uh, could be very complicated. And uh, actually it is very complicated, but it, I think it is very nice work. And uh, as far as uh, uh, I'm con I, I am concerned, and uh, I understand what, uh, what, what is the, uh, the problem, what kind of problem is the non perturbative construction of chiral base zero on that. So if you have time, please read this paper. Okay. Yeah. In any way, and uh, the mirror Fermi approach, in the mirror Fermi approach, we use, we introduce both of the left handed, right handed components part and uh, adopt the simple functional measure, but give uh, invariant uh, some interaction for the right handed part, our right handed part, and try, try to decouple. In some way, so this is the uh, uh, this is the characteristics of these two approaches. And now I would like to discuss the uh, mirror Fermi approach. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, yes. Oh, nice. and, yes. So, regarding this uh, anomaly. Yes. Um. Uh, yes. The question is that, uh, um, well, I suppose that uh, this formulation, the anomaly free theory, the gauge invariance must have some non trivial way of uh, cancellation about the maybe the path integral formulation yes. in some way, maybe a path integral measure or something that, that makes the cancel anomaly free theory, this cancellation work out. And uh, maybe the one, the first naive question is that. How precisely this uh, condition can be formulated in a very clean mathematical way? That's a question. Yes. For, uh, anomaly, yes. for example, we can just yes. write down anomaly con cancellation conditions, and a lot and in modern language, the anomaly can be captured by this uh, one higher dimensional invertible topological field theory, yes. topological quantum field theory, invertible TQLT. Yes. And precisely yes. can be written some cobordism invariant. So these are yeah. no way I would say. But I wonder for those uh, condition one can derive from this. Uh, yes. Maybe your latest formulation will pass in the world. Can you get some condition like that? Some mathematical constraint, even just for abelian theory, uh, can or, or maybe spin tense theory. Can you get something like that? And yes. and this is our first question. The second question is that. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, some of the anomaly may not be as simple as just the anomaly within the internal symmetry group. For example, if you consider spin 10, mm -hmm. you will say, oh, spin 10 does not have uh, any anomaly, mm -hmm. but that's, that's too quick uh, mm -hmm. because it, it does not have a perturbative local anomaly. But mm -hmm. when spin 10 theory together with the spin space time symmetry of the, the mm -hmm. uh, spin group, of the space and rotational symmetry can have, uh, if they share the Fermat parity, they can have a additional mm -hmm. W2, W3, Stephen Winnie class anomaly written in PyD, and that's the global anomaly. So, so, so in essence, this anomaly cannot be captured by spin 10 internal symmetry group alone. Mm -hmm. So my question is that uh, whether those pass integral major, major change type of a statement on the latest formulation can capture those anomaly. Maybe maybe you will, maybe maybe you will, maybe you can capture or maybe you will miss some anomaly. So I wonder mm -hmm. what's the mm -hmm. understanding there, because yeah. because you know, the way yes. I'll I'll be able to compute the anomaly, sometimes yeah. we we'll go to some uh, 
weird manifold. Yes. I need to do something possible, mm -hmm. more more mm -hmm. more complicated. So, mm -hmm. so I wonder, I wonder yes. with the latest formulation, how can you tell whether you have a all the gauge invariance check that you need? Really, I guess that's mm -hmm. a question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. The as to the second questions, uh, such a a special global uh, anomaly uh, can appear for some special background. I mean the curved background. So the usually we are working with in the lattice series, we usually are working on the simple torus, starting with a finite finite volume. And if such anomaly also appear in the torus uh, uh, space, then we can capture, we can uh, reproduce such global anomaly. And the uh, formulation, uh, I, 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 I'm thinking that uh, um, if we, uh, this kind of uh, lattice fermion formulation can reproduce such global anomalies, if we try to uh, put uh, this formulation more general uh, uh, lattice structure, or with uh, some gauge field or some spin structure and so on as a background. Okay, so uh, I have some results on such kind of computations. And uh, uh, I, I believe that we can reproduce some part of the global anomaly. And if we try hard, we can find some way to reproduce possible uh, global anomalies. Yes. And actually, uh, we can define the, uh, the lattice counterpart of the Yeta invariant. And that the Yeta invariant is related to the global anomaly of this overlap wide fermion. There is a way to define such. And that the Yeta invariant satisfies the uh, actually, uh, simpler uh, uh, in the simple setting, uh, APS index theorem. And uh, if we, we can prove, if we have a situation that is gauge local uh, uh, gauge anomaly, uh, then we can argue that eta invariant is a kind of Boltzmann invariant. This kind of uh, formulation can be done. Yes. So uh, I do not have enough time to uh, uh, talk here. And uh, I did not publish yet. And uh, we are now trying to prepare the paper on such formulations. And but uh, uh, there is a way to define the data invariant kind of thing. With yeah. related, pitch related directly to this overlap by frame. Uh, yes, the yes, since while overlap by fermion is realized on the edge of the five dimensional Wilson Dirac fermion, domain wall fermion. And then, so there is a uh, if you, you cons if you look at this system closely, then you can have a uh, dive, you can have a, a lattice counterpart of Diefried theory. Okay. And then using five dimensional Wilson Dirac fermions, you can introduce the a Yeta invariant. Lattice counterpart or a lattice regularization of lattice counterpart of the Yeta invariant in the continuous theory. And then we next consider the five dimensional uh, overlap fermion to six dimensional domain wall fermions. We can have a similar relation between six dimensional domain wall fermion and five dimensional overlap fermions. And that relation actually reproduce the APS index error. And if you can prove that six dimensional chiral anomaly, chiral anomaly of the overlap fermion in six dimensions is topologically trivial, if we con if con when we impose the anomaly free conditions in four dimensional theories, 
then we can argue that that DA10 invariant uh, has a similar property as voltism invariant. Okay, and just like the in the continuous theory. Yes. So four dimensional, five dimensional domain wall fermion to four dimensional overlap fermions, overlap wire fermions, and uh, six dimensional domain wall fermion to the five dimensional overlap fermion. These two relations can be regarded as a Diefried theorem and the APS index theorem. Okay. And in this manner, we can discuss the very similar way in the continuum, decent modern uh, argument of anomaly, we can reproduce this kind of argument in the lattice. And actually, 20 years ago, Martin Lucia uh, give, gave similar arguments for the uh, global integrability for the overlap direct fermions. Yes. And uh, this is uh, what I said here is just a uh, uh, lattice size five and six dimensional space approach. Yes. So actually, we can give a similar uh, argument as in the continuous theory. As we, uh, that is very familiar for you. And uh, so, so I believe that uh, there is some way to reproduce uh, the possible global anomaly if overlap fermion put on such uh, background. Yeah, yeah there's the first question I yes. ask, but, but I, let me just correct. The second question is that uh, yes. it's more like a logically, you don't have to worry about time, by the way. The, the, the problem is about logically, how do you, because I think seems some of the people's work is trying to check the exact gauge invariance for the past integral. But my point is that it may depend on what kind of background, uh, what you want turning on to do the gauge transformation. Perhaps probably people in the past may only check the limited certain case of the gauge transformation, maybe just within the internal mm. symmetry. Ah, uh, yes. You can turn on a space time background. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps yeah. you miss the global mm. anomaly that mix between mm. the space time yes. gravitational part yes. and the internal yeah. symmetry. Yeah. Then the check in the past, how do you know it's consistent? If I were, uh, yes. if, if I were, if I were part of the people in the past, I certainly don't know. But nowadays, yes. I know the cobaltism relations. I, I then I can enlist all the possible anomaly I need to check, and then yeah. we can check one by one. But but that technology wasn't known, so I was just wondering, say, how logically people can feel, uh, mm. show that this is a complete, uh, or at least is a. Uh, a criteria that you need to see whether this is a consistent definition. I guess that's what I would try yes. to ask. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this point is difficult, but uh, if if uh, if we know in the continuous theory, there is no global anomalies in, in the certain theories, then uh, uh, we can uh, we can satisfy that that theory formulate, uh, we formulate such theory uh, on the restricted background. I mean, the, for example, torus space-time. And, and the, we, we, in the continuity limit, we, we sure that there is no global anomaly. So uh, we satisfy once we can formulate uh, gauge invariant manner, on the torus. Okay. okay. Yeah. This is. Although I feel yes. like torus may not be enough to ensure this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway. But uh, even that part, even even if we know the uh, global anomaly is absent in the continuous theory, but it is not so uh, trivial to prove that uh, the lattice theory itself is consistent, even on the simple torus. I agree. I agree on check yeah. on torus is non-trivial enough, but yeah. but I still feel that may not be enough to show on torus. But, no. but uh, yeah, I don't know enough. Yeah. But, yeah. I, mean, I just I just wonder say, how people check to feel like they check something non-trivial enough no. to show no. this consistent. I feel no. like it will be more subtle than what has been checked. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway. I think some some technique or some um, method are developing toward 
this direction. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. yes. But it is, it is still incomplete. Yes. And I suppose the first question might be something that related to some APS type of index that yes. you can still obtain yeah. from latest yeah. simulation. Yeah. 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 But I said is that the, uh, maybe you know the uh, uh, Osaka University group, Fukaya san, Onoki san, Yamagi san, et, and all, et all, with some uh, with some mathematicians, they proposed the uh, APS index itself using the domain wall type fermion. And what I said is there is an, uh, uh, there is another uh, there is a way to define the eta invariant on the rest. and there is a relation between the eta that the eta invariant and their uh, proposed uh, index. And that is obtained, that can be obtained from the six dimensional domain wall fermion to five dimensional overlap fermion relation. Okay. So in this manner, in this way, uh, we can establish the APS index, the uh, counterpart of the APS index seven. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what I said. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> Okay. And uh, so uh, uh, let me skip the, the uh, short review of the ice template skill model and the mirror fermion model. And the, the idea is just use Dirac fermion itself, but try to first introduce the Dirac fermion, but try to decouple the left hand, uh, right handed part by, uh, or right handed uh, no, mirror part, part uh, or uh, by certain interactions. And uh, in this way, uh, measure itself can be kept very simple. Okay, so this is a way uh, to, uh, this is a way, uh, mirror fermion approach with overall fermion uh, constructed. Okay, so the, and uh, the interaction itself must satisfy to, to decouple the uh, mirror fermion mode, fermion, uh, the interaction, uh, how to design the interaction to decouple the extra mirror degrees of freedom, we must uh, uh, satisfy the necessary condition Einstein Presky formulated very long ago. So I, we try to do so, okay? Okay, so that, that is the point, yes. So let me skip that part, okay? So let me... Uh, uh, go on to the mirror fermion model with overlap Dirac fermions for two dimensional U1 chiral case series. Okay. So if we consider the mirror fermion approach with certain lattice fermion series, we need to establish the decoupling limit of mirror fermions. And in that limit, gauge symmetry must be preserved and only massive or gap excitations appear in the mirror sectors. And if we give us a successfully gap in the mirror sector of the mirror, of, if we can successfully gap the mirror sector, then this degree of freedom should leave only local terms in the effective action. Yeah, this is due to the uh, decoupling theorem, the idea. This is based on the decoup idea of the decoupling theorem, or in more general point of view, Wilsonian denormalization group. So we need to check if we formulate a, a kind of mirror fermion model, then we need to check all these properties. Okay. And uh, in the case of two dimensional Abelian chiral gauge theories, as I said in the introductions, uh, massless wire fermions, the target in the target sector, I mean the physical sector, should reproduce, should produce the non-local singular uh, vacuum polarization contribution to the two-point function of the gauge field, which could give, uh, which can give the uh, mass square of the gauge field. Okay, but if we have a mirror fermion mode. That mirror fermion mode should not, cannot, should not contribute to such singular part. 
So their contribution should be local and non-singular and local. This means that in the momentum space, the vertex function in the momentum space should be analytic function of momentum. Okay? And uh, we need to check this part. Okay, actually, uh, Popitz et al. try to show this fact in their formulation of a three, four, five model and try to show this. They try to uh, show this by the Monte Carlo simulation and observe the two point function. Then they found that it is singular as uh, the target while filming. And the size of the singular part is just same as the while fermions, uh, target while fermions. So it, should, it looks like a vector-like theory, which has, that, is, that means uh, that is vector-like massless Schrodinger model, uh, twice as large as mass square for the uh, U1 gauge boson. So this was the result obtained by uh, their numerical simulations in their formulation of three, four, five models. Okay, so this is a situation. So against this situation, so I try to formulate another model, simpler. I think uh, these models are simpler. And uh, uh, instead of three, four, five mode, and uh, I explain why I formulated, why I consider, I, let me explain why I consider these models instead of three, four, five model. And we show that this model in the weak gauge coupling limit, uh, there is no sign problem. So we can perform the Monte Carlo simulations. And then uh, we, 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 I would like to present some numerical results uh, for this uh, simulation. Okay. So let me uh, discuss the, uh, our model of the Abelian chiral gauge models. And uh, as I said, uh, charge assignment, we introduce four left hand, right handed wire fermions and four left handed fermions. And the charge assignment is plus, 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 plus for the right handed part and minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one for the left handed part. As I said, this is nothing but the U1 actual symmetry for this uh, Dirac pair. So uh, we can formulate such a fermion theory with overlap fermion like this. Here, we denote the target physical sector action, SW. Okay. And here, uh, we have two file, file fermions, uh, two Dirac fermions, Psi and Psi prime. And the Psi has a plus one charge, and the Psi prime has minus one charge. And here, we introduce the chiral projection operator to project this field left-handed. Ah, sorry, uh, left-handed fermion is assigned this one, okay? And the right-handed fermion assigned this one, okay? And the Psi has charge one, and uh, this is projected to the left-handed because here we have a P plus for the Psi bar. So uh, this action actually left-handed for the field. So this part describes the wire fermion with discharge. And this part with opposite chiral projector and the D prime, prime means the charge is opposite. Okay, the fact that the charge is opposite. So link field is uh, differently coupled okay? in these two Dirac operators. Okay, so this is a way to formulate a classical action on the lattice for this charge assignment. Okay. Now we introduce the opposite chirality field for each psi and psi prime. And it has the same charge D plus one and here D minus one. Okay. So we just, uh, we just switch the chiral projector at plus, plus P plus to minus P minus. So, okay. Uh, at, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I use a different notation for this part and for this part. Uh, we can simply write to this term, just changing the chiral projection P plus to P minus. Okay. okay. 
Okay, so uh, this plus and this this plus minus and this plus is a Dirac fermion with a positive charge in this way. But uh, using the Ginzburg Wilson fermions, we can separately, in, uh, we can clearly separate the wild components in this way. And uh, this part is also the same. And the psi plus and the psi prime minus consist of a single Dirac fermion with charge minus one. Okay. So in this way, uh, we can uh, formulate mirror sector uh, bilinear genetic terms. Now uh, I introduce the interaction for the this psi plus and the psi minus prime field only. And for this purpose, we uh, try to keep spin uh, this uh, since wire, since we have a uh, four wire fermions here for each plus and minus one sectors, we can have a SU4 symmetry. And the SU4 is equivalent to the spin six. So we can think of these four wire fermion is in the four dimensional representation of spinner representation of SO6. Okay. And then we try to formulate the, uh, the interaction for the right handed uh, mirror fermion sectors keeping to keep this symmetry besides of the gauge symmetry you are actually. For this, uh, we can introduce this kind of Majorana type uh, interaction, Yukawa interactions. And here EA is, uh, uh, stands for the SO6 vector spin field. So this has a uh, six components vector model, okay? So SO006 vector model, we, uh, in, we introduce the, we couple the uh, SO6 or O6 vector model to this fermion system, okay? And we try to write the Yukawa type interaction, but this breaks the fermion number. Usually U1, not the U1 actual, U1, uh, Fermion number symmetry must be broke, is broken by this term. So this is a Majorana Yukawa interaction coupled to the SO6 vector spin field. Okay. So in this manner, we try to keep the spin six symmetry in this interaction. Okay. And at first we introduced a kinetic term for the uh, SO6 vector spin field. Okay, here. And uh, this type of interactions, this type of bilinear fermion operator, if squared, and then we obtain the SO6 invariant for fermion operator. And if we take the square of this operator, this is, and this gives a Tofuft vertex for the uh, for fermion number symmetry breaking. And uh, if we, since we are considering Two dimensional abelian theories, we have an instanton, and the instanton can produce the fermion zero mode. And in the overlap fermions, uh, that zero mode is actually exactly reproduced in this formulation. So we must take care of this fact. So if we try to decouple the mirror fermion, all of the mirror fermions, but if you if we consider the instant on background, then zero mode also appear in the mirror fermion sectors. But we still need to decouple or to give a mass for such zero mode, including such zero mode. And for this, we need to introduce the total vertex to saturate the zero mode contribution of the path integral. So this is why we uh, formulate this Yukawa interaction operator, fermion operator, which can reproduce the Tofuto type vertex operator. If we A, E, A here, uh, if we integrate first the auxiliary uh, spin field, then we can have uh, this kind of interaction generated. And the square of that, this operator can be regarded uh, as a Tofuto vertex, then even with even with the uh, 
uh, instant on background, we can expect to such a premium measure. Okay, so, so this is why I try to formulate this kind of interaction. And uh, if we formulate this theory, Miller fermion sector has this kind of signet. U1G is a gauge in, uh, U1G is actually U1, gauge interact, gauge U1 symmetry. And we have a spin six symmetry and also original U1V symmetry. But this is not uh, conserved, it is anomalous. Okay. And uh, SU4, uh, spin six symmetry is actually a uh, gauge invariant and anomaly free. Okay. And uh, but uh, we leave this symmetry. Uh, 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 as global symmetry. Okay. And the U1G is, of, of course, anomaly free because uh, square of unity times four equal minus one square times four equal. So anomaly free condition is satisfied in this combination. Okay. So, so U1 actually can be gauged. A spin six symmetry is, can be also gauged, but leave global and the U1V is broken explicitly. And actually it is anomalous and it, it is anomalous and it is explicitly broken by this interaction. So in this manner, uh, this interaction satisfies the uh, Einstein Preskill conditions, requirements. Okay, so. So, and, and uh, with these symmetries, we cannot introduce the a bilinear fermion term, mass term for this uh, wild fermion. Okay, so this is chiral in some sense, in this sense. Okay, okay. and then the, about the spin six representations, uh, we can introduce the Clifford uh, gamma matrix uh, like this. And uh, we can formulate a uh, so spin six representation as usual. And I denote the generator as sigma AB, and AB runs from one to unit, one to six. Okay. And we and uh, uh, actually four dimensional representation is projected, is defined by the projection with gamma seven, like this. Okay. And we can introduce the charge conjugation matrix of this gamma matrix. And uh, we can define that as uh, charge conjugation matrix for this uh, gamma matrices. And we can introduce the C gamma A uh, matrix, uh, TA, anti-symmetric uh, matrix TA by the product of C and gamma. And they have uh, this, if we have a representation for gamma matrices, then T matrices are given in this manner. And we can check that they are all uh, anti symmetric. And here uh, we have a gamma 3 and CD. Uh, this matrix is symmetric and this is anti symmetric. So this combination is uh, a symmetric representation. Okay, a consistent bosonic operator. And we square this to obtain the spin 6 uh, cartic operator. And this operator square. Is nothing but the Toffel matrices. So in this manner, uh, we formulated this, uh, this interaction. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Thank you. Can you explain more about uh, how do you write that interaction? I, I don't uh, have yes. a, one, one more comment about the symmetry choice. I think uh, because you yes. have used the U1, G as a chiral symmetry. Well, yes. the spin six is a vector symmetry. So, ah, yes. Uh, yes, here. Yes. So, because yes. You, in that case, you choose one chiral and one vector symmetry, then the field redefinition will always make at least one of them to be chiral symmetry. So, these are chiral model, I, say, I suppose. Yes. Yeah, the reason is just because you cannot simultaneously make the two of the symmetry assignment to be. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 uh, yes. Uh, so, the, the design of the interactions there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as uh, as Juben said, uh, the psi and psi prime assigned uh, this U1 charge, one and minus one. 
while uh, at, uh, as for the spin six, uh, they both uh, belong to the four dimensional representation, not complex. So this representation is chiral as uh, Jiben said, yes. Okay, then, so this field psi and psi plus both uh, transform as uh, four dimensional representation of spin six. So this is why we need to TA matrices with charge conjugation matrix. Okay, if we have a conjugate field here against this one, then we just simply use gamma A, gamma matrix itself to have a vector representation of spin six or SO six. But uh, uh, both field here uh, have uh, 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 the same representation. Uh, mm, ah, okay, so to preserve the U1 gauge interactions, we need have psi and psi plus, not psi bar plus and so on, okay? And so we need to, so I assign the same four dimensional representation here. Then uh, we need to introduce the, the T matrix with uh, charge conjugation matrix times gamma, this one, okay? Then uh, this interact, this term is a U1 actual invariant and also spin six or SU4 invariant. So this is way, but we are uh, in the, uh, but this term can break the U1V because fermion number is not preserved in this operator. So in this manner, by this charge assignment, and uh, this one is uh, realized on site, on site, and this one is also realized on site, and this one is broken, okay? And uh, this one is anomalous, and it must uh, break. Fermion number is break broken in this theory. Uh, U1V is a fermion number and this must be broken since we are gauging U1 action. So uh, we must ex break explicitly. So in this way, we introduce uh, this kind of interaction. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, if the reason why we try to gauge U1 actual uh, is we try, we, uh, so if you gauge U1V, then you, we, you can introduce the vector uh, usual direct mass terms. But I need to, uh, I try to, uh, 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 I want to, uh, Kill such bilinear gauge invariant operators. I choose this kind of representation for your actual A gauge and spin six global symmetry. And in that theory, U1V must be broken by anomaly, and it symmet this symmetry is explicitly broken. We can break uh, this symmetry explicitly anyway. <laughs> Uh, is this explanation uh, answer to, is this, uh, Juven, do you have any uh, yeah. yes. other I think, I think I think it's more like, a, how do you know what is sufficient and necessary? Sufficient and necessary. Yeah, these are yes. possible interaction, but how do you know it's sufficient and necessary? Sus sufficient and necessary. And uh, sufficient, uh, what do you mean by the sufficient? I think, I think uh, oh. just just to add add something. I think uh, yes. if, if this interaction is uh, uh, inspired by the by the work of uh, uh, you and uh, Kik, um, Fidoski ah. and Kirai. Ah right? yes, right. Yes. So so let me explain this part. Yes, soon. Okay. So mm -hmm. let me go on. Okay. Yes, and uh, some, yes, uh, okay. So I can explain this part point uh, just uh, as, as soon later, okay? And uh, as I said, the OT, 
the OB square is to foot vertex. And uh, since overlap fermion can respect the index theorem, uh, okay, and uh, zero mode can reproduce the zero mode, we must take care of such configurations and such zero mode. So we need to in, we need consider the top type vertex into the interaction to gap out uh, all of the fermion in the mirror sectors. Okay, so and the. There is one reason why I choose this kind of model instead of 345 model. 345 in the, in the 345 model, since the charge assigned to single fermion is rather large, so if you have a, a charge unity instant, you have a five zero mode for single fermions. And if you count the, the number of zero mode for three fermions, you need, you understand that we need a, a rather large multi-fermion operator to construct the TOFUT vertices. And uh, it is very hard, I think. It, uh, it seems very uh, complicated, I think. And we need to keep these interactions strong enough to uh, gap out all fermions. So, uh, in this sense, uh, the charge, human charge, gauge charge uh, to be assigned to each fermion should be very uh, small. Um, it is better to have a small charge for each fermion. So this is why I first tried to choose this type of uh, charge assignment to, uh, to obtain a small, multiplicity of fermion in tofut vertices. Okay. Okay, this is one reason. And uh, another uh, and uh, another point of this construction interaction is this interaction in this model, we can take uh, safely the large H limit, large minor Yuka coupling limit compared to the kinetic term for the right handed or uh, mirror fermion mode. And in this respect, we must be careful. Yes, this term is uh, behave like a mass term, and this term is nothing but a kinetic term. And uh, to take the large mass limit of the overlap fermions, we must be careful. So let me explain this point. Okay, usually we have a, a for, the, usual, for the Dirac fermions, usually we like the Dirac fermion action with mass, Dirac mass, like this. Here, we have a kinetic term with overlap Dirac operator. And to formulate a mass operator, we insert one minus D here. And uh, this is because under this chiral transformations, this operator inserted with one minus D factor uh, and uh, one minus D times gamma five can, these two operators form exact chiral multiplet under this chiral transformation. And uh, this factor actually removes the species double mode to contribute the mass term because species double has a uh, eigenvalue unity for this Dirac operator. Because uh, the eigenvalue distribution of Dirac operator is just a circle and uh, when the uh, species double has eigenvalue unity for this Dirac operator. And this factor project out that species double mode. So this is why this type of operator has a good chiral property in some sense. We can say in this way. But in this case, uh, we, if we take the uh, naively uh, the large mass limit with MD goes to infinity, uh, by taking the MD goes to infinity, then, so this term, compared to this term, this term dominates. But in this case, Dirac operator, species double is projected in this operators, then it does not mean the all fermion become massive. So we must take, so in this case, we write this action in this manner. Here, Z is one minus DMD, because here we have a Dirac operator D, so we put, we take, we 
we, we include this MD times D uh, contribution to this kinetic term. And then Z is defined in this chief minus MD. And here we have M, same as MD. And the limit of the large mass, uh, large mass limit of this kind of fermion should take M goes to infinity. Okay, compared to Z. And this means that we take Z goes to zero compared to the M. It, and uh, it actually means this MD is just a unit. Okay, so the, this type of mass term, the largest possible value is just unity. And uh, if we take a larger value than unity, then species doubles become very light compared to the uh, massless uh, physical mode. So we must be careful in, to, consider, uh, to take the large mass limit. And uh, it is the same for the Majorana fermion. And uh, usually we introduce the Majorana mass term. We can introduce the Majorana mass term in this manner. For psi right-handed fermions, we can introduce the Majorana term like this, psi plus and psi plus transverse with charge conjugation matrices. Okay, and uh, but if you look at the matrix element of the mass term, it has singularity in the momentum space. So this means that, so at, at some momentum, this factor vanishes identically. So this means that uh, this term alone cannot uh, decouple all fermions, all fermions. So we must, so instead of this simple uh, mass term with charge conjugate mass matrix CD, we, if we introduce the I gamma five here, then a mass matrix, ma matrix element of this operator is just a unity, some skew, skew symmetric operator, but the, the Puffian of this operator is a uh, unity. So we can uh, gap all fermion with this kind of, if we use this type of operator, we can gap out all uh, degrees of freedom, including species doublets and the physical mode. And then we can take the large mass limit safely. Okay, so uh, in order to introduce the, this kind of interactions here, you must be careful about the, uh, we can take the large mass limit or not. Since we introduce uh, a certain uh, 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 strong enough coupling to break uh, the global, global flavor, uh, global uh, fermion symmetry, which could, which have Tofuta, uh, Tofuta anomaly. So we need to be very careful how to design such interactions. If we are careful about this point, then you can simply take the large coupling limit. Okay. And the uh, analysis can be easier. Okay. So I choose this type of interaction matrix so that we can take H limit, H large H limit simply or simply omit this kinetic term compared to this interaction vertex. So this is the way I constructed uh, vertex operator here, vertex operator, Yuka interaction, Yuka Majorana Yuka type interaction here. Okay, so this is very subtle point about the Ginsburg Wilson paper, but we need to decouple. Since we are doing, we are, we, since we want to decouple all fermion degrees of freedom. So it is not, it is different from the usual situation to give a mass for the physical light uh, mode. Okay, so this is the usual Dirac fermion for that purpose. But for us, we need to write, take, we need to write in this way or in this way for the Majorana mass term. And uh, this, also applied to the Majorana-Yukawa type interactions. 
and that this is, uh, I, I think, I, I, I think this is a, a different point from the previous work by Kopitzetto. I think this is one of the reasons uh, they have not expected the result. Yes, another reason is the sign problem. Uh, okay, another pro another point is the sign problem. And uh, as I said, this limit can be taken and it is very defined. And another point is our model, in our model, premium determinant is real positive, real positive semi-definite. I mean, the if we uh, perform the path integration for the mirror fermion mode, and, and uh, uh, then uh, we get the effective action uh, with the uh, uh, SO6 vector spin field in background. Then we have a Puffian, uh, then we have a, this kind of determinant here. And we need to integrate over the auxiliary spin field further. And then we have a partition function. And I said that this factor is positive semi-definite. A real positive semi-definite. And so uh, integration over the auxiliary spin field gives rise to just some positive results. Okay. And uh, since this is a real positive semi-definite, we can perform this pass integration by Monte Carlo simulation the, regarding this factor is weight for the, these part variables. Okay. So this is another point of this construction. And actually, and uh, in the Poppitz work, they also try to do the Monte Carlo simulations, but in general, their model gives a complex actions, complex effective actions. So they try to uh, uh, tame that same problem by taking certain large coupling limit where the same problem become uh, mild. And that limit was uh, actually the large coupling limit of the large minor coupling limit. And in that case, we need to be careful about how to construct this operator. This type of delta. We cannot use. We cannot use this type of. It is. It is dangerous to use this type of Majorana pattern instead of this one. Okay. So, yes. As far as I understand, uh, this choice is different from theirs. This is very subtle technical point of the overlap fermions, but we must be careful. And finally. It, as, uh, as uh, someone asked me, uh, this model is related to the uh, new equal eight, eight flavor, Myra, 1D Myrna chain with SO7 or SO10 invariant kartic interactions to gap out the mode. And uh, this is, uh, and uh, as discussed by Fitkoski and Kitaoski, uh, this uh, Majorana chain is given by this Hamiltonian, and we have eight one, eight Majorana chain like this, and then we can consider this kind of interaction. This is actually SO7 invariant, and uh, as uh, as shown by uh, Professor Yao and his collaborator, this can be written in terms of in this way. Manifestly SO7 invariant using SO7 gamma matrices. Okay, and I think this this expression is very nice. And uh, actually, and uh, and this minor chain can be if we comp we introduce the two component to minor field, as in the relativistic case, then this Hamiltonian can be written in this manner. This is nothing but the Wilson Dirac fermion satisfying Majorana condition. I mean, the Majorana Wilson fermion. Okay. And uh, in the Hamiltonian formalism. Okay. So, Majorana, so uh, as you know, uh, Majorana chain can be uh, written 
in terms of Wilson fermion in minor representation. And the interaction vertex can be also written in this manner, okay, with uh, gamma matrix for the SOSM representation. So here at C or Psi, uh, we are regarding this field belong to the spin six representations. Okay. And then now, uh, then we can consider to formulate this uh, system of uh, one plus one D Majorana chain in the Euclidean path integral formulations. So we simply adopt this type of Majorana. Since this is written in terms of Majorana Wilson fermions, it is straightforward to write a corresponding uh, action in this way. Here, we have a Wilson Dirac operator and here charge conjugation matrix for the Dirac and uh, spin seven, okay? Then uh, we can, uh, here, Psi M is a Majorana fermion with respect to this, these Dirac and uh, Psi M stands for the uh, Majorana fermion, uh, satisfies the Majorana condition for Dirac and the spin seven charge conjugation. Okay, and using this uh, fermions, you, we can introduce, we can rewrite, simply rewrite this interaction terms. This, since this is a local interaction, then we can write a counterpart of such interactions in the Euclidean path integral formula. Okay. So, so uh, I think, uh, so Majorana Wilson fermion um, can be formulated in Euclidean path integral formula like this. And then we want to deduce this SO7 invariant system to SO6 invariant system. Okay. And the uh, eight Majorana fermion, uh, eight dimensional representation of SO7 is equal to the four Dirac fermion, four dimensional representation of SO6. Okay. So, and uh, so eight component Majorana fermion can be represented with a four component Dirac fermion by this condition. And if, if you, if you adopt this represent this uh, way to write the psi m, then this field satisfies the original Majorana condition. Okay, and uh, so if we, we deduce the symmetry SO7 to SO6, we can express the original Majorana fermion system, eight Majorana fermion system with four Dirac fermions. And uh, this is written like this. Here, a psi and psi bar is a Dirac fermion. And the interaction we can write by using this relation, we can write this uh, SO6 interaction, reduce the interaction in terms of the uh, four dimensional, uh, four Dirac fermions like this. And here we have a chiral structure in this way. And actually, since original theory is defined in the Hamiltonian formalism, and if you translate the uh, four fermion interaction straightforwardly, it, it breaks the, the covariance in the two dimensional Euclidean space. And thus, this gamma, the term involved, which involves gamma zero factor, uh, breaks actually the uh, covariance. So we, we can drop, we may drop, we uh, drop this term to obtain the covariant interactions. And then we get this term. And now I try to improve the chiral property of lattice fermion by simply replacing this Wilson fermion Dirac operator to the uh, overlap fermion. And the chiral component, definition of chiral component is based on the Ginzburg Wilson relations. So this is the interaction, uh, so fermion system. And uh, this is nothing but the uh, mirror fermion sector of that uh, of our uh, previous uh, mirror fermion models. So this is the way uh, our model is related to the Kitaev Majorana chain, nu equal eight SO7 symmetry case. Okay. 
so our mirror se uh, our uh, mirror sector of our model is uh, related to in this manner to the mu core eight one D minor chain with SO6 invariant interaction. And it is formulated in Euclidean particular format. And as Fidkowski and Kitaev and Yao and you, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I, Ku, Ku, yes, uh, Yao and Ku uh, proved that even when symmetry is reduced to SO6, this system can be gapped even if the bare mass goes to zero mass okay so uh from this result even our model is formulated in euclidean pass integral formalism we may expect that in, in a certain limit this system is gapped completely so this is our expectation and this is why we adopt this type of fermion systems so uh we can I uh, expect that mirror fermion sector is actually gapped by this interaction. Okay. Do you have any question about this point? Is that clear? Yes. So okay. Then, since I uh, since I said uh, since uh, uh, this system has a uh, had, does not have a sign problem in the weak pH coupling limit, we now try to uh, do uh, obtain some uh, non perturbed results through the Monte Carlo simulations. Ah, okay. And another point of this uh, theory. Uh, let me. Uh, I, I forget the uh, one point. And that's we we uh, have first we have a U1 actual gauge model so th with this charge assignment and global spin six or SU4 symmetry. But if we uh, mix uh, uh, some uh, U1 uh, factor mixed with U1 axial and the Cartan sub algebra of spin six. Then we can define another U1 chiral gauge theory. And uh, we, we, we can consider the two plus one, minus one, minus one, minus one model. Okay. Right handed, uh, left handed fermion has a charge two, zero, zero, zero. And left handed fermion, right handed fermion has plus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. We can assign this uh, charge, assign a charge, a uh, U1 charge. We can consider the uh, this kind of U1 symmetry to gauge for gauge symmetries, and because uh, this also satisfies the anomaly free conditions, as you can see easily. Okay, and actually this Q and the Q prime is a uh, uh, sum of the generator of Q and Q prime. Uh, Q and Q prime is uh, the sum of the U1 actual uh, charge generator plus. Uh, some combination of the Cartan sub algebra of uh, spin six uh, uh, generators. So uh, we can uh, obtain we can obtain uh, this kind of very chiral, <laughs> chirally charged assigned uh, model from this simple actual <laughs> type model. Okay. So this is very I think this is very non-trivial. I, I I think. It is very interesting, and uh, actually, uh, since uh, in this model, um, if we uh, uh, global symmetry, uh, the uh, action for the target wire fermion and also for the mirror fermions, we can formulate the. We can just use the same, uh, no, same action on this case because uh, this charge assignment is. Uh, realized by the sum of the original uh, symmetry. Okay. And uh, in this theory, uh, the, we have a global symmetry, U1 gauge and global symmetry structure like this. And uh, for example, we have a SU3 flavor symmetry. And uh, this is anomaly free, actually. And this actually matched. So 
this is realized on site. And the not much the U1 symmetry that that is that has Tofut anomaly is uh, break broken explicitly by this interaction terms. So uh, this even this model is uh Einstein press Q condition is satisfied. Okay. So uh, we can expect that uh, we would like to check um, the mirror fermion mode is actually decoupled or not also in this model. Okay, okay so this is uh, the point uh, I would like to uh, say about this model. Okay. Now let me uh, show some numerical result about this model. So uh, here I uh, present some numerical simulation result. The simulation is performed for the auxiliary, auxiliary uh, spin six vector spin field. And its action is defined by the fermion determinant in this manner. And this is written in this way. So we need to compute this uh, action for each configuration and try to do Monte Carlo simulation. But as I said, this is real, so we can do this. The, this is a, a, a figure for some history, Monte Carlo history of the, the value of the actions. Okay, so we, since we do not have any coupling constant in this model, okay, and uh, ah, yes, and uh, here, I, as I said, in the original formulation, I said, we can introduce the kinetic term for the bosonic variables. But for our purpose, since we want to have a symmetric gap phase, we, uh, for vector spin models, uh, kappa is called, if we put the kappa zero, then we expect that boson is in disordered phase. And uh, if we have a very large kappa, then, uh, symmetry breaking can occur, but in even, but we are working in two dimensions. That possibility is, uh, uh, that is not possible because of the Coleman, uh, no, Mami Wagner theory. But since we have, but uh, in any way, we are try to consider, the, we want to consider the disordered phase. It is uh, it is safe to keep kappa small, so I put kappa zero exactly. Okay, so in this limit, Monte Carlo action for the uh, spin variable come from solely from the fermion determinant. So this is why I try to Monte Carlo try to apply Monte Carlo simulation with this effective action. Okay, and uh, this is the history of the value of action for the lattice size L equal four, eight, twelve. Okay, the value of the action are proportional to L square, so different value, but uh, you can see this certain, uh, you can see the summarization for such number of configurations. Okay, and for, for after generated this uh, configuration of uh, or so six vector field, vector spin field, we can evaluate the correlation function of the spin field itself and also the fermionic correlation function, okay? In the channel of four-dimensional representation of spin six like this. So we can consider this kind of correlation function. The fermionic case, we have a fermion bilinear but times the uh, spin variable. So this part is a composite operator to the uh, elementary field. Okay. This kind of operator is uh, possible in the symmetric phase. So we need to try to measure these correlation function and uh, try to estimate the correlation lengths. And we want to have these all fields in the mirror sector have very short range correlation function. Because uh, since 
because if they are uh, they are uh, in the gapped phase, correlation length should be some uh, finite uh, values, small values. So, I so we need to check this. The and uh, another uh, comp we also need to compute the two point BART expansion of gauge field in the mirror sector here. And uh, this is defined by the uh, gauge variation, twice gauge variation to take that gauge variation of the effective action uh, with respect to the variation of the gauge field twice. Okay. And then uh, we set the link variable goes to zero. Okay. So in the weak two point function, in the weak gauge coupling constant is defined in this by this expression. And so we have a polarization tensor in, by this expression. And if we consider the uh, second model with chiral, chirally assigned charge, with chirally assigned charge case, we need to take the uh, variation with this in the direction of the Cartan subalgebra of spin 62. So A, B denote the sum combination of the uh, spin index, so six index, okay. yes. And uh, I need, so from the mirror sector, we need to compute this one. Okay. And uh, this, this result, this quantity actually has very complicated express, uh, representation in terms of the uh, fermion uh, variables. And uh, this is the actual expression. And uh, it has very, very many terms, but we need to uh, compute this one in any way. So for, for given uh, uh, configurations, we can compute this kind of matrix element. And then we can take, we can, we can calculate the inverse of this kind of matrix numerically, and then evaluate this correlation function. Okay, so even in the rather small <laughs> two-dimensional lattice, the computation is not so uh, straightforward actually. And uh, to compare the uh, to compare the result of the mirror sector two point function to the target uh, physical sector, we also need to compute the uh, two point function uh, a two point vertex function of gauge field from the physical massless fermion sector. Okay, and uh, this is this can be done uh, rather explicitly. And uh, in the in the continuum, it, it should behave like this one. So this is the expectation in, from the continuous theory. And uh, as I said, this is a non-local uh, structure. So if we go in in the momentum space, there is some singularity uh, in k equals zero. In the limit, k goes to k, the momentum vanish. In the limit, the momentum k mu vanishes. And it means that the directional difference, uh, the directional difference in the limit. And so we can observe this kind of singularity by taking the uh, different limit in the momentum space. Okay. So we can compare the non-local. So this, from this kind of uh, method, we can uh, check that uh, non-local contribution is actually uh, produced or not. So, okay. So let me show some numerical result. And uh, this is, the, I'm very sorry, but the figure is very small. And uh, this is the value of the uh, two point uh, correlation function of the bosonic uh, spin variable. Spin 10, a uh, spin six vector uh, spin variables. And the two point function behaves. The, and uh, in, this is the usual scale, and uh, this is a log scale. And the even log, so you can see the even log scale, it decays very, in the log scale, you can check that it is, it decays very fast. Okay, so correlation length, correlation, a two point correlation is actually very short range. And uh, this is a figure for the fermionic two point functions. 
And in the log scale, we can see the very clear exponential decay in this manner. Okay. And uh, from this rate, uh, correlation length is very short. Uh, several of uh, lattice spacing. Okay. So we can check all these results. And this is also the last figure is in the log scale. So we can see the clear exponential decay and, uh, uh, and clear exponential short range decays. So we do not see any evidence for the very uh, light degrees of freedom in this way. Okay. And uh, this is the, two, the result of the two point functions, okay? And uh, this is the uh, two-dimensional momentum space. And we, we can consider the two limits, three limits to the, uh, to the, the vanishing momentum, vanishing k equals zero limit. So uh, this line and this line and the uh, diagonal line. So blue, black is this way, and the uh, red stands for the diagonal limit. And in both limit, this is the point for the momentum zero case. And in both limit, uh, the value is uh, identical and uh, we can see the smooth uh, sine curve-like behavior in this way. And uh, this result should be compared to this result for, from the uh, massless wire fermion in the target sector, okay? So because, uh, because of the non-local properties, since this, this term comes, can be computed from free fer wild fermions, uh, this is the exact result, okay? And that it can reproduce even on a finite lattice uh, as a clear uh, singularity. So the difference in the limit, okay? So uh, black and blue and uh, red comes from, red is stand for the, uh, diagonal limit and uh, all these three cases are different as can be expected from the continuum uh, result. Okay, so this one is from X direction and this one is time direction and this is diagonal direction and all these three results are different. And we can reproduce this one. Okay, so this property in the uh, left uh, wire fermion target physical sector is very different from the mirror fermion sector result. Okay, so, and uh, there is- Sorry. There, um, yes, so, yes. So about the non-zero uh, non behavior at the k equals to zero. Um, yes. Is it possible that the physical fermions are gapped, but then there are still gapless modes uh, consisting of uh, multiple fermions that survives, so that there's still gapless modes, but those most gapless modes are not the original physical fermions. Ah, in this case, since we are working in the uh, weak gauge coupling limit, so physical uh, wild fermion sector is just free fermions, free overlap wild fermions. So. Uh, this uh, and uh, this result is a uh, uh, free fermion result. Okay, so I we are sure that uh, uh, physical uh, wild fermion are there and contribute as expected to the two point vertex function. Yes, I, uh, I didn't say uh, this point uh, clearly, but uh, since we uh, since we have a clear separation of left-handed and right-handed part. Right, and the uh, action is actually written in this. Sorry, yes, in this manner. And here we have a, a wild fermion contribution, and uh, here mirror fermion sector. Since we are working with Ginzburg Wilson fermions, this right and left uh, fermion um, separation is uh, exact, actually. And uh, this and uh, mirror fermion only have this kind of interaction, pitch coupled to EA. So this part, if we consider uh, in the, at least in the weak gauge coupling limit, this part is, this part is separated completely, okay? 
And then in that limit, too, uh, wild frame measure can be separated in the, uh, completely. So uh, we say clearly that this contribution is come from the free wild physical wild fermions in this case. So this is another good point to use the Ginzburg Wilson fermion for the Miller fermion approach. Okay. So I I I yeah, actually I appreciate this point. And uh, Popitz started this. Popitz uh, realized this point and he start he started to study. He started their project using overlap fermion. I think it, it was very nice approach. So yeah, but in some way I, they didn't uh, get a desired result. Yes. So okay. So this is yeah, a clear yes. evidence from the massless physical wild fermions in this case. So left and uh, a mirror and the wild fermion sector is completely separated in this weak H couple degree. Okay. Thank you for asking this point. Yes. And uh, finally, yeah, uh, yes. Professor, just in yes. case, uh, maybe, maybe I think it, it will be probably also summarizing soon, but uh, in case yeah. you, yes. you need, oh, I I'm hope finishing we, yeah, yeah, yes. I think, I think it will be Sorry. maybe in the next <laughs> 15, 15 minutes by yes. your noon time yes. or something. Yeah, a, thank you yeah. very much. Thank you very much. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. And uh, this is a uh, uh, last part. And uh, it, uh, this is a uh, uh, vacuum polarization result for the uh, uh, chirally uh, as charged uh, models. Two, one, minus one, minus one, minus one. And in this case too, although this uh, sine curve behavior is large, but uh, uh, we do not have any singularity in this limit. Okay, so let me summarize. Okay, so I discussed the two-dimensional U1 chiral gauge theory on the lattice with exactly gauge invariance formulated in the mirror fermion approach with overlap fermions. And uh, this model actually satisfies the one, uh, the combination of one plus two mentioned by the uh, John Presky in his write-up. Okay, the, uh, and I consider this kind of models instead of three, four, five. Okay, and uh, this is closely related to the uh, Majorana uh, chain for mu equal eight, which is gapped complete, which can be gapped complete, okay? And uh, we define this model in such that uh, large minor Yuka coupling is very defined. And uh, in this limit, uh, no sign problem appears. So we did some Monte Carlo simulations and uh, we obtained the numerical evidence that the short range correlator, all the fermion and the boson field in the middle Mirror sector has a short range correlations. And also, uh, we have a regular local behavior of the two point vertex function for U1 gauge field in the mirror sector. And it is consistent with the decoupling of the mirror model. Okay, so, this is the opposite result reported by Popitz et al. But uh, what we uh, obtained is as I explained. So, thank you very much. So that's all. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Professor Yusuke. Yes. Thank you. I can look very much. Any question from the audience? So, um, could you comment a bit on uh, why uh, you think the CGP method actually fails? Is it because the they actually use the strong uh, coupling or? Yeah, actually. They uh, because their model has in gene generically has a sign problem, and they try to they tried to find the, the coupling region where the sign problem is mild, and it was large mild Nayuka coupling limit. And as I, as far as I understand, the their mild Nayuka coupling definition is based on just CD, not included. I gamma five CD. So 
I think there is some singularity in their coupling, but they take the large coupling unit. And、uh, if you do this, if you work with the Ginzburg Wilson fermions, it can have the situation where the mirror、uh, or species doubling come back. And、uh, this is why、uh, the mirror fermion sector、uh, can couple to the gauge field in a singular manner. This is my expectation. Understanding, but、uh, I do not know.、Uh, I cannot say definitely. So, because as I said, three, four, five model in Euclidean formulation is rather、uh, complicated. We need to introduce rather large strong coupling multi fermion interactions. So, I think it's difficult. I feel it difficult. I felt it difficult. So, I choose simpler model. Okay. So, sign there is a sign problem, and they try to escape that, escape that problem by taking a large coupling limit of a certain coupling constant. Okay, but that limit could be singular because of the nature of the Ginzburg Wilson fermion. So, this is my understanding at this moment. I see. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe、uh, let me follow up a comment. But、uh, yes. From my perspective, and maybe also from some of other people's perspective, it seems the design of the interactions for CGP approach、mm -hmm. may not be appropriate enough to gap the mirror. I I don't know whether this this is a、uh, consistent with what the Yoshio's under your understanding. Because some of the terms, you know, if you include the interaction terms more than more than enough,、mm -hmm. then you will you will also we call this unwanted terms,、mm -hmm. and they may not be compatible in the sense of、uh, the set of interactions may 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 have problems.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, the consistency condition. We check people check is more like a a gapping condition so, such that the, if you try to write a a fermionization to bosonizations of this interaction、yes. term you can find out a correspondence set of a、uh, this interaction term is more like a, some boundary conditions of、uh, mm -hmm. one high dimensional theory and the interaction、yes. term is, is ending on the one plus one d uh, age mm -hmm. uh -huh. and uh, extend the、uh, This、uh, this operators on the boundary can extend to line operator in one higher dimension theory,、mm -hmm. and you can check the statistics of this linked line operator in one higher dimension. They must、mm -hmm. have to be they must have a trivial statistics. The terms this、uh, CGP include includes additional terms does not satisfy these conditions.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are kind of send worry. I'm not sure、mm -hmm. Ashton Presky、mm -hmm. will consider this.、Mm -hmm. So that, that's why I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether Ashton Presky or interaction、mm -hmm. term.、Mm -hmm. Maybe also,、uh, let me think. May not be. May may maybe may include also too much interactions. Hi.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the thing I feel. I'm not sure whether you feel this、mm -hmm. way, but、uh, mm -hmm. I think I think、uh, I think the condition wasn't formulated precise enough mathematically, in my opinion.、Mm -hmm. Yeah.、Oh. Yeah. Yeah, the design of interaction is much should should be much more careful. I guess that's okay. So, so do do you have a clear condition for the U one ah ah U one gauge theory? Yeah, for any、uh, generic U one two dimensions. Yeah, for any U、yes. one. Yes, for for、mm -hmm. all the example, I know how to design for all your example. I think so, it should be all clear. Yeah, yeah. This this is the、uh, the condition you、uh, um, obtain. In the work with、uh, Professor Ben,、oh, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this.、Two. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 This. Yeah. This I understand. Yes. Yes. And yes.、Uh, I suppose I suppose similar conditions also.、Mm. Also, And,、uh, there should be some generalization for that conditions for other、mm. theory, although it's、mm -hmm. not 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 as clear formulated.、Mm. In three plus one D, yeah. yeah.、Mm -hmm. 
and uh, yes. yeah. Okay. So, 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 so let me explain how for CGP approach does yeah, that. Yeah. So, so uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, I would like to understand the difference between the fermionic, fermionic formulation and uh, bosonic or uh, some um, formalism through the bosonization. Okay. And uh, so it, is there any argument to uh, formulate first uh, fermionic manner in the Hamiltonian formalism, then go to uh, the bosonic variable description, rather rigorous manner? Is there any such formulation? Is it possible to do such kind of discussion? And uh, so keeping the lattice spacing finite. I mean the rigorous manner. <laughs> Is there any uh, okay, argument? Yeah, yeah se several comments. First of all, I, I understand you mentioned that these are Hamiltonian ladies uh, written in the paper, but to be honest, I think the mm. interaction design does not matter or does not, it, it will not be affect what you choose pass in the goal. Lagrangian oh. formulation or latest semitonic yes. formulation. In either case, uh, yes. the proposal written in the paper should be that uh, uh, one can use the path integral approach. Whatever fermions, uh, this overlap fermion or the other type of uh, latest approach, it, it really does not matter, I think. As long as you include a set of interactions and do the simulations, it will work. That's my claim. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes. Regardless, yeah, yeah, yeah. Regardless, latest. The reason we yeah. write the latest Hamiltonian is uh, just yes. because, because yes. from yes, from my I background, understand. from my background, yeah. my my background, yes. it's easier to write a Hamiltonian. We are familiar. Yes, yes. And then, then, uh, then because yeah. because we just want to provide one 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 latest model which is more precise yes. for yes. for convince yes. people to can do simulation. So we write that way. Yes. But for the for the for the latest community. Uh, one can use the same set of interaction terms, and uh, uh, we we did also provide not just the multi fermion interaction terms. As you say, these are not necessarily used. You can also just use multi fermion without the bosonization techniques. Yes. Or you can use the cosine cyclotron term as as bosonized field. Also, in in the paper, new paper, we also write a version that using just Yukawa Higgs. But we need to yes. also satisfy the condition and that modify the CGP approach of the Yukawa Higgs term to the, the new set of interaction terms we write there. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, is, is, the, in the, in the is this this new paper? Yes, yes. In the new paper, we do, we do write in. You in are the, working with the Yukawa theory? Uh, in, uh, in, the very end, in, the, in the very end of the end of, paper. Ah, okay. We, yes. we, we have a comment on how to modify the Yukawa Higgs tool. I see. Also, I see. Yeah, this is a new part. Yeah, we, we added this part just to yeah, clarify. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Hi, yes. Yeah, yeah okay. so, so, so the design of interaction is the key thing. Other, other thing I think for, for oh. formulations wasn't so, wasn't, so, wasn't so crucial for us. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a clarification. And one problem, uh, I think one yeah, problem. And, and, and also, uh, also another thing, just let, let me finish one more thing is that whether these are latest formulation of interaction or even in the continuum limit also may not matter that much. In a sense, one can possibly also argue from the field theory continuum, aiding this set of interaction and dealing with this interaction appropriately, you, are, you also can gap the continuum theory, continuum field theory by this. Mm interaction terms mm. so 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 really i think uh i'm not sure what's clear to people listen to this talk or uh, you know just thinking about this problem whether it's clear that to them but it's clear to me at least that it does not matter uh is it, it there's this 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 is not really so much distinction between the latest formulation or continuum formulation ah, it's yes. more like how do you design interaction appropriately yeah yes yeah so that's basically the thing and then yes. and then and then in all this paper you see on the screen i think we try to design interaction in a in a way we think is correct mm -hmm. yeah yes uh -huh. yes and and also yes. it does not depend on which latest formulation Hamiltonian or Pass Integral or Lagrangian, I don't think 
I don't think that matters as long as you do it correct, do the do the correct formulation mm. and add the correct set of correct choice of interaction, it should work. Mm. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh in the Euclidean approach, uh there is a problem uh because uh if we have a, a sign problem, then we do not uh do the Monte Carlo simulation. So uh mm, I as uh, this is why the puppets at all try to the large myelina yukaka coupling limit in their formulations. Okay, uh, some combination of the uh, coupling constant limit. Okay, the um, but the, since the overlap permeon has some technical uh, subtlety, and you must be careful about the, the introduce write down the intro. Uh, interaction terms, as I explained, okay? So uh, we need to do, we need to take care of this part. And once we do this, then um, I do not think the interaction uh, condition itself, it does not matter. And uh, so in this sense, I, uh, except for the very, Technical subtle property of the uh, overlap fermions. And I agree with you. Yes. So, and uh, I do not find any difference between, I do not think Hamiltonian formulation is also okay. And uh, uh, Euclidean, I do not think the Euclidean formulation is superior than Hamiltonian formulation. And uh, for future uh, applications, we should actually formulate the uh, Hamiltonian formulation for chiral gauge theories, I think, okay. And uh, actually, uh, actually we, since, uh, as I said, uh, our model is closely related to the Kitaev uh, Fidkowski's uh, Hamiltonian. And uh, uh, we actually can write down the uh, Hamiltonian formulation of our model using the uh, overlap fermions. You know, it, overlap fermion also has a Hamiltonian formulation. As uh, you, you may not know, but uh, some time ago, Kreutz, Neuberger, and uh, maybe, I think, they formulated the Hamilton, uh, they have a proposal for the Hamiltonian formulation of overlap fermions. And in that case, Hamiltonian, fermionic Hamiltonian and the chiral charge commute actually. So you, we can have some exact chiral symmetry on the lattice. And, uh, but the wild decomposition is not exact. Okay. But uh, we can use such formulation to formulate this kind of uh, Miller fermion model. And find, try to find, uh, limit where the mirror fermions can successfully gap. And uh, the chiral symmetry of the Hamiltonian formalism uh, is uh, useful to find such limit, I think. Okay, so that is, uh, so I think uh, it is very interesting to formulate Hamiltonian formulation. So do you compute the some correlation function for the vector uh, two-point functions? Did you also compute the two-point function for the gauge field, background gauge field in your uh, density matrix denormalization group computation? I think uh, we haven't, or oh, maybe some men, men can comment about this. Yeah, so uh, in our work, we uh, in a density matrix ring machine group, uh, we didn't really include the, the gauge, uh, the dynamical gauge field because it's yeah. actually, mm -hmm. yeah, it's difficult to do. So we ah, yes, actually yes. implemented uh, the just the global symmetry. Ah, yes, it's and okay. We, yeah, but uh, once, uh, yeah, you, you can introduce uh, as a background gauge, uh, you can introduce the gauge field as background as a source, and then you can compute the correlation function or, 
of the vacuum polarization contribution from fermions. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, or you can directly introduce the gauge field uh, dynamically and then measure the uh, mass square of the gauge field. This is another way. Yeah, because yeah, then um, mm, yeah, direct, you can compute the directly the mass, the mass for the correlation function of the gauge field. And right. this is also. Um, so in 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 uh, Monte Carlo simulations, I think it's easier to do uh, a dynamical gauge field, but in in density matrix re renormalization group where we actually uh -huh. use uh, uh -huh. uh, matrix product states to represent mm -hmm. uh, the the, uh, mm -hmm. the fermionic uh, system, uh, mm -hmm. it's actually difficult to actually put mm -hmm. this uh, to include this dynamical gauge field as some kind of a matrix product state. Yes. So yeah, that's why um, mm -hmm. it seems that it's not very feasible to, at, at least I don't know mm -hmm. how to mm -hmm. include mm -hmm. uh, dynamic gauge field in density matrix. Uh, no, no, no. I, I think it's a certain correlation function of fermion. If, if you can, it is enough to compute the uh, two point right. correlation right. of the gauge current. Oh, we, we actually opinion. yes we we, we calculated wait, wait, the, wait a second uh, you mean the fixed background of the gauge field or fixed background the background is fixed so if the background is sample as like a dynamical should, should no, you no, sample no, no. so uh, he, he he said it is rather hard to introduce the dynamical or fluctuating yes. background uh, gauge field yes, yes i understand this one. <laughs> yeah yes. but uh uh, correlation function itself is induced from fermions. So, uh, so uh, you uh, you can identify the gauge current, current of fermionic current operator which coupled to the gauge field. Mm -hmm. The gauge field is uh, background gauge field, source field. And you can obtain, uh -huh. if you identify the gauge current operator of the fermion, then yeah. you can compute the two point function of that current operator. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. That, that, is, that defines a two point function of the external gauge field. And uh, since we have massless fermions, that two point function correlator uh, have a singular behavior in the momentum series space. So that produces the mass of the gauge field. If you if gauge field is dynamical. But you can measure that correlation function itself without dynamical gauge field. So uh, what I did is uh, actually uh, the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. In the Monte Carlo simulation, I mean the only for the bosonic uh, SO6 vector spin field which is an auxiliary field to represent the fermion multi fermion interaction for the uh, mirror fermion sectors. So, so no, I do not include the uh, dynamical gauge field. Just consider the weak gauge coupling limit, mm -hmm. where the gauge field is perturbatively treated. Yes. I see. Yeah, we, we did, uh, we, we actually did in a real space. So we directly mm. calculated the fermion mm. two-point correlation functions uh, in real okay. space. And then yes. we identified the, uh -huh. the exponential decay and uh, the I see. power law decay I see. behavior uh, before and after the transition. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> okay. And, uh, okay. Power law behavior for the fermionic correlator. Okay, so this means that uh, uh, fer uh, some part of fermion, uh, you mean the mirror sector? Yeah, the mirror uh, sector. Can, mm, yeah, af after the transition. Yes. And, yeah, after uh, we, we. After we, the we, transition, yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The transition is uh, you, you claim that the uh, uh, XY is as uh, XY spin. Uh, Costellis-Saurus-like uh, transitions. That's right. Okay. Yes. 
And uh, so disordered phase, you have massive uh, or exponential decaying correlation. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why I think, yes. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's what we yeah. did yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So in the phase where the uh, disorder, in the disordered phase, uh, I think you should, uh, uh, yes, for, uh, for me, uh, it is very, it seems very important to check the locality of the contribution of the right handed and uh, mirror fermions sectors to actually decouple from the uh, low energy gauge bosom and massless wire fermion sectors. So I, this is why I computed a uh, two point function of the gauge current. And uh, this is also uh, the reason Popitz et al. Uh, have computed such contribution. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you mean by locality of the, of the mirror? Yeah, mirror if, mirror. If, if the mirror fermion is acquire a gap in the disordered phase, then mm -hmm. uh, such fermion can contribute to the effective action for the gauge field only in the local uh, terms. Because this is massive, and uh, this is based on the renormalization group uh, uh, study. Uh, this is a general result. If you decouple the massive fermions, it leaves only the local term to the low energy effective action. I mean, the local means the analytic with respect to the momentum in the uh, rather narrow uh, definition. So uh, you can, uh, yeah. So it, it, I, uh, we think that uh, it is better to check this property. Yes, yes. So this means that the mirror fermion sector is just, uh, just behave like the local counter terms for to preserve the exact gauge invariance of the fermion system, okay? So mm -hmm. this is very consistent uh, picture. So I need it. I try, we um, tried to. Right, yeah. so Hi. so for the, the, the gauge invariance or the uh, preservation of the, the chiral mm -hmm. U1, we yeah. actually checked the uh, correlation functions of the mass, all the, bilinear mass terms. Yeah, and it yes. turns out that in, in the gapped phase, in the massive mm -hmm. phase, uh, mm -hmm. all the correlations actually decay exponentially. Yes, yes, so, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I, I think that is very uh -huh. clear, clear uh, evidence for. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So that those those bilinear mass terms, they don't actually yeah. uh, pop yeah. up, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah.